He who will go forward with his whole heart will obtain what he seeks. Only do not be of two minds, reads the opening of the 160-page book, The Gospel of the Lots of Mary, a 1,500-year-old book that contains a previously unknown gospel has been deciphered. Anne-Marie Lugendic, a professor at Princeton University, discovered that this newfound gospel is like no other. Anne-Marie said, When I began deciphering the manuscript and encountered the word gospel in the opening line, I expected to read a narrative about the life and death of Jesus, or a collection of sayings. What she found instead was a series of 37 oracles, written vaguely and with only a few that mentioned Jesus. The text would have been used for divination. A person seeking an answer to a question could have sought out the owner of the book, asked a question, and gone through a process that would randomly select one of the 37 oracles to help find a solution to the person's problem. The owner of the book could have acted as a diviner, helping to interpret the written oracle, she said. An interesting example that illustrates the ancient book's positive outlook is Oracle 24, which reads, Stop being of two minds, O human. Whether this thing will happen or not, yes, it will happen. Be brave and do not be of two minds, because it will remain with you a long time and you will receive joy and happiness. Another example is Oracle 34, which reads, Go forward immediately. This is a thing from God. You know that. Behold, for many days you are suffering greatly, but it is of no concern to you, because you have come to the haven of victory. Anne-Marie says that this is the only lot book found so far that calls itself a gospel, a word that literally means good news. Although people today associate the word gospel as being a text that talks about the life of Jesus, people in ancient times may have had a different perspective. On the other hand, New York Times best-selling author Greg Braden speaks about another manuscript, the Gospel of Thomas. He's saying that in this manuscript, which was written about 300 years after the time of Jesus, there are two important keys. Gospel of Thomas, verse 106, translated from the Nag Hammadi Library, it says, when you make the two, thought and emotion, one, you will say to the mountain, move away, and the mountain will move away. It's saying that when you can marry your thought and your emotion into one single potent force, that's when you have the power to speak to the world. When you make the two, one, the two, thought and emotion, when the two become one in our hearts, we create the feelings in our bodies. Here's another example from the Gospel of Thomas, verse 48, which says almost the same thing. This was so important that it was recorded at least three different times in the same Gospel. Look at what it says. If the two make peace with each other in this one house, they will say to the mountain, move away, and it will move away. He's telling this again in a complete different verse. How powerful it is to marry thought and emotion but they still haven't told us how. How do you do this? In the early Christian Bible, in your Bible today, there's a passage that says, Ask, and ye shall receive. To ask, we must speak to the field of divine matrix in the language that field recognizes. The field doesn't recognize your voice. It recognizes the power of our heart. In our heart, we have feeling. It creates electrical waves magnetic waves. That's the language that the field recognizes. So when you create the feeling in your heart as if your prayer has been already answered, that creates the electrical and the magnetic waves that bring that answer to you. Ask and you shall receive. While we still have this passage in our text, in the Bible that you have today, the King James Version, John 16, 23, 24, what you have is the condensed version. You have the edited version. And the edited version says, Whatsoever ye ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. This is the edited version. They took out the two sentences that tell us how to ask. In the fourth century, when the edits happened, they took those sentences out. 
the original sentence sounds like this. All things that you ask straightly, directly from inside my name, you will be given. So far, you have not done this. Because if we ask with our voice, we have not done this. Now here's the piece that was edited. Look at these two powerful sentences. Ask without hidden motive and be surrounded by your answer. Be enveloped by what you desire, that your gladness be full. It's not saying to speak a word. It's saying to be surrounded, to feel as if. Feel the feeling of what it is like as if it has already happened. Be enveloped by what you desire, because that is when your thought and your emotion become one. Now, if that sounds too religious, because it's from the Bible, look at what the philosopher Neville says in his book, The Power of Awareness. It's the same thing. Neville says, you must make your future dream a present fact by assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled. The primary similarity between these two Gospels is that they're both saying the same thing, but differently. It's saying that using this language, we can speak to the divine matrix. It's the language of no words. Every one of you is speaking to this field every day. The question is, do you know what you're saying to the field?